Hello everybody and welcome back. In this lecture we're going to have a look at pivot points. We're going to be quite brief like we were in the last lecture with applying transforms. In this case we want to go through pivot points because they can be incredibly useful when trying to position and move or rotate our object. In fact the pivot point is integral to how those transforms are actually occurring. So let's just have a quick look at this. Let's fix our our Stonehenge here because I ruined it and saved my file and overwrote it. So let's just do a bit of repair work first of all. So where did I want to put this? Well, first of all, this looks like it's the wrong dimensions and everything. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. So let's rotate it. This was 45 degrees. Okay, it was probably minus 45 degrees then to get it back to how it was. Okay, that's a good start. And whilst I'm here, I'm going to be a good boy and apply my rotations. Otherwise, I will forget. Let's have a look at these positions. This would have been 1.5, I believe, and this would have been 4.5. Excellent. That looks pretty good to me. Let's check these other ones out. Look, this has a non-uniform scale. So let's go ahead and apply the scale. And let's do the same over on this one so we've got our stonehenge back so i'm going to go ahead and save that this time and then i'm going to go file save as and i'm going to call this one simple doorway so doorway there we go now why have i done this well i want to show you the power of pivot points and we'll also destroy this in the process no doubt so first of all let's create ourselves a door so i'm going to go and add in another cube and we are going to move it to the center of our scene. I'm going to look at it from the side and move it roughly in the right place. So look, it's the right width and we need to lift it up to probably there. Excellent. So I now can be precise about that and go 1.5 and 2. And it looks like we're going to have to have this door 4 meters tall. But its X dimension doesn't need to be this wide. Let's only make it 0.1 wide. So it is a very thin door and it's in our doorway, which is pretty awesome. Let's save my work. Well, let's apply actually. Let's apply our scales that we've got there and then save the work. So we've now got a doorway. But how do we open and shut this door if we wanted to? Because if I go ahead and press R to rotate the door and I lock it to the Z axis, well, I suppose it could be a turnstile door like that. That is one solution. But I don't like that. I want it to hinge on one side. And at the moment, it's pivoting around the object's origin. Now, you'll notice at the top here, we have pivot points. We've already discussed them briefly in passing. If we select that, we get five different options. You can also use the period or full stop key on the keyboard to bring up this pie or radial menu to change our pivot point. So let's have a bit of fun with this. Let's select all of the mesh objects in our scene. So there we go. We've got all of these things selected. Now, let's say we wanted to rotate them. Let's just see what happens if we press the R key to rotate. Oh what's going on there it's rotating around one of these objects were you expecting that to happen so one of the things with a pie menu or a radial menu is it remembers where the cursor was when you clicked away from it so we would have had it on medium point so let's press the r key again there we go it's now rotating around its center point but as you saw there we could select the active element then this lighter orange one becomes our pivot point for all the selected objects so if i press rotate it's going to rotate around those if i press scale it's going to scale from that point now that can be incredibly useful if we're scaling from a fixed point because it enables us to move and scale away from an object so what other options do we have here we have a bounding box center now largely speaking that's going to have a very similar if not the same result as median especially with an object like this so what is happening with the bounding box well a box is drawn around our objects even if they're curved it'll go to all of the extremities and then it's the center point of that box in this particular case it would be the same as the median point for all of these objects i'm almost certain let's do a, a rotation with that see how high up it is just there now let's try medium point oh no look at that it is slightly different but you get a very similar effect let's go on and try this one here individual origins so now all of these are going to rotate around their own origins let's go ahead press the r key let's press it again 
to get this trackball rotate. So that's quite cool. You can end up with some nifty objects or abstract art in this case, if we're not careful, uh, by just rotating things around their individual origins. And that can be incredibly useful with radial arrays, which we'll play with later on. So let's set this to the final one here, which is the 3D cursor. So the 3D cursor is down here, and if I go ahead and select my door, it's not going to be quite right. If I press the R key to rotate and then press Z, it will roughly work. But look, the pivot point is over here and not next to the door. And if you recall from an earlier lesson, we can move our 3D cursor. We could do that precisely by going to the View tab in the Properties panel and then moving it along the Y axis until it's in the right place. Now. If you didn't know, you could be a bit rough. We could zoom in and we could shift and right click to roughly position it and then have a look at the values here. So the X position where well, we actually want it in the middle of the scene because our door's there. Y, it looks like it's 0.5. And because we stuck to whole numbers, it was very easy to work out what that should have been. There are other ways of manipulating the 3D cursor, but we'll get to that later on. Finally, the Z here, I'm going to set that down at zero, but it really doesn't matter because we're rotating around the Z axis. So now let's try that again. Let's go ahead and rotate on the Z axis. And look at that. We've got a door that is working how we'd expect, and we can position it how we want as well. And it would look perfect and brilliant. We've created a simple doorway just by manipulating our pivot points. I'm going to go ahead and save that and wrap up this lecture there, and I'll see you all in the next video.